My guest today is Jack Schwager, and he's best known for his Market Wizards books. He's talked to thousands of traders and money managers over the years. Jack, what are some of the major lessons learned over the years from talking to all these very successful traders and money managers? It's a hard question to answer in a short because I've written four books filled with an, with an answer to that question. But to boil it down to maybe just a few essentials, uh, first, I would say that people need to find an approach that fits their personality. There's no one magic way that works for everybody. You have to find your own way. Some people it's fundamental, some technical, some long-term, some short-term. It's different for everyone. Second thing is, and I guess one kind of rule I really believe in is know where you're getting out before you get in because that's the only time you have a projectivity. And that could also mean how you're getting out uh, instead of the exact price necessarily because you might be using an indicator or a system and then you just get out when the system does. But you have to have a plan to get out before you get in. That's really the message. And the third thing I would say is a lack of loyalty. Like, you know, loyalty is great with pets and friends and family, but not with trading. Trading, you want to be the most disloyal person around. You, if there's any reason why you no longer believe in something, you've got to get out immediately. And a really great traders, the market wizards, will not only get out, they'll actually go the other way. A lot of traders you talk to use chart patterns as their main way of looking at the markets. How would you recommend somebody kind of combine maybe chart patterns with indicators, or is there one is better than the other? That's a good question. One way you can do it, if you have an indicator that indicates a higher probability that the market's going to go up or down in certain regions, and let's say you also like to use chart analysis, and I, I do as a matter of fact like to do that, then what you can do is use the indicator to say, okay, now the indicator is in a buy mode, so I'm only going to use charts to decide where, you know, where is a good uh, buy spot. So here's a support resistance on the chart. Uh, because I'm looking for the market to be up now because of this indicator, I'm only going to be looking for pullbacks into support. I'm not going to be looking to sell on, on rallies into resistance. So that's a way you can combine the two. You've developed some proprietary indicators for TradeShark. Talk about those. They're basically three indicators. And the, the kind of thinking behind it is, is to identify the major trends of markets. So the first indicator is, is a trend weight. And that basically, in, in very simplistic faction, fashion, when it's positive, is indicating the market's in an uptrend, negative in a downtrend. But it's much more than that. It's not just a matter of whether it's plus or minus. It, the indicator can range from minus 100 to plus 100. So it also indicates the strength of the trend. And there's a difference whether it's like a 10 or a 90. And eventually, you'll have the trend will get uh, fully weighted while the overbought oversold gets stronger and stronger as the, as the trend goes on and on. And then that directional weight will start to drop. And it's not unusual, especially for significant trends, to see that directional weight go all the way back down to zero by the time the market's at the top. So th that's in general how they, uh, the three work. The exciting thing about this is that you haven't done an indicator for the public before, and it is available in TradeShark. How will it help traders make decisions? Traders can use it in two ways. Um, they, they can, the indicators are, are designed in a way that they can lend themselves to almost a systematic approach. You can set them up so they literally will give you buy and sell signals, and, and those are customizable. They're not like one spot where it's a buy and sell. You can design, you design it to fit the way you trade, and what's comparable for you. So that's one way. But the other way is by simply defining buy and sell regions in where you're biased to trade the market only in that direction. So you can use it in conjunction with whatever your approach is, uh, whether it's uh, chart analysis or some other indicators, and you can combine that with these indicators using these indicators, let's say the directional weight indicator, as a filter to say which direction are you going to take the other indicators. You'll only when it's, when it's in positive mode, then you'll use the other indicator to only take buys, and, uh, or you'll use your chart analysis to only give you buys. So that's how you can combine them. Jack, there's thousands of indicators out there. Some may work better on certain markets than others, but I sense that yours are, are good across the board for all markets. Well, as you know, philosophically, I come from the school that you don't want to design things specific for a market because you'll get stuff that'll look great in the past and then just break down the future. So. These indicators are, uh, the, the, the thinking and philosophy behind them is very broad. It's trying to capture things that are true of all types of markets across all times. So uh, the tendency of markets to, to have significant trends, 
the tendency of trends to, you know, trends at some point get overextended. So those are the types of inputs. Uh, there was no looking back at any particular group of markets, be it futures or stocks, and fit something that works for that. It was basically starting with broad principles and coming up with indicators that really can be used to any type of market, be it currency, be it stocks, be it, be it futures. Jack, thanks for being here today. Uh, I enjoy it, thanks. We've been talking with Jack Schwager about his indicators exclusively available on TradeShark software.